Okay, here we are in another unboxing video. It's me, Brent, from Path and Tarot, the uh, YouTube channel and as well as the blog uh, of the same name. Uh, so we're going to do a tarot unboxing with uh, Rackham Tarot. Rackham. Arthur Rackman. Ar 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 Arthur Rackham. Rackham Tarot. Yes, there you go. It's the artist's name. Tarot. 78 cards. Uh, here is the, the, the deck. It's uh, shrink-wrapped. It's ready to go. Um, I encountered this deck on Amazon and just intuitively thought, hey, this looks really cool. It caught my eye. And uh, here we are. It's ready to be unwrapped and unboxed in this unboxing video where we're going to look at a lot of uh, interesting parts of the cards, capture some uh, intuitive experience and do a reading. You know, we're going to talk about some standard things that I like to talk about when I open these cards, because that's that's what comes to mind. That's what I like to talk about with uh, cards. Uh, we're going to open the cards in just a second here, but we can tell already just by looking at the package what's in store. Uh, this is a low scarabero, low scarabeo, uh, oh, it's always a mouthful, by L Lelowin. Uh, publications as well, so they're sort of connected. Uh, so I can tell you that the quality of these cards will be fairly high quality, and I think the experience will be really fantastic, just by uh, knowing the publisher. You know that that's a that's a cool thing. You you can look at that and think, yeah, you know what? There there's a there's a standard of quality that that company has that you can sort of expect. So that that's cool going into it. Now I don't know much about the um, the the author of the deck. Uh, I intentionally did not look up anything just so that I could open up this deck with you on camera and just capture everything live intuitively. Uh, I like to do that. Uh, you know, we'll look at the guidebook and see if it tells us any more about the deck. So there you go, the shrink wrap is off. Oh my god, I like, I like taking the shrink wrap off because here's the thing. Once the shrink wrap is off, that's it. Can't go back. This is this is done in one take. Like there's there's no edits. Um, I don't do that. It's all all one take. Here's the magic knife that I will put away. It's not that sharp, but it's to poke you. All right. So here it is. Here's the deck. So shrink wrap off. I'm gonna open up the top of the deck, and I will be expecting what? More shrink wrap. Yes, double shrink wrap. So hey, why is that? Why is that important? Um, why? I mean, well, you, you you talk about it on the channel a lot. Why do you do that? It's just shrink wrap. Well, your first experience with the cards, the very, very first experience, um, should say something. So when I know that the cards are shrink wrapped again, I can expect that my very first experience touching the card will be somewhat clean, uh, free of maybe debris or dust or, or whatever. Um, I at least can expect that. So your very, very first sensation of the cards is a good one. So that's part of the presentation. Um, it's part of your experience. You can't, I can't re-experience opening up this deck for the first time. That's it. We've already gone past that. So that's why I think the shrink wrap is kind of an interesting thing to discuss for that reason. And so here are the shrink wraps off. That's, that's it. The booklet was inside of the shrink wrap this time. That's kind of, uh, I don't know. I don't know what that means. No idea. But there it is. The deck is opened up. I'm going to show you something very, very interesting with this deck because I've already detected something uh, immediately by looking at these cards. You'll, you'll see it later on, but I'm going to sort of lead up to that um, and coach you into this experience because it's kind of neat. It, it's almost like a... Um, well, I don't really know what to call it actually at the moment, but we could maybe say it's an artistic uh, design choice. So if you're interested in designing your own tarot cards, you may want to uh, take note of this. So here we go. Here's the cards. We won't look at them just yet. We won't go through all the cards. I'll show you a few. And we're going to do that tarot reading as well at the end, and you'll see some of the cards there. But you know, I'm not going to show you all the cards for copyright reasons. Um, so let's see what we have here. So we've got the, there's two extra cards uh, that come with tarot decks usually. Um, 
Why would that be? Well, uh, it's probably easier to print 80 cards as opposed to 78, so why not just throw in two promotional cards as they have done quite wisely? Terrosophy, the Terra Association, Los Scarabeo. Hey, look at that. Similar, similar parties, uh, familiar figures, and uh, sort of like a promotion for the artist. Very cool. So there you go. We'll take these two extra cards, save them, into the tarot deck there. Put that off to the side. Yeah. Didn't mean to throw it like that, but I did. So here's the, uh, here is the uh, book um, in the late 19th century. Ah, oh, yes, the 19th century, the golden age of illustration as they refer to it. Uh, refer to it. Uh, 1867. So this would be a uh, 19th century uh, illustrator, we could say that. Although it doesn't look like there's too much information about uh, Arthur Rackham, um, that's okay, because this pamphlet, or like mini booklet, really just has what the cards mean, as, as, as a good booklet should, so that you can read the cards, and it shows, tells you how to read the cards. It gives you a three card reading, which I think we'll do. We'll do a three card reading, because that's what this booklet wants us to do, so we'll do that. What else can we uh, find here from this little quick write-up? So, 19th century, born in London, 1867. So, well, when did he pass on? It doesn't say in this booklet. So all we really know is that he was most prominent in the 19th century. So he would have been... What's the math? 33 in the, at, at 1900? That's kind of crazy, right? Lived through two centuries? Weird. 67. So an illustrator, so Grimm's Fairy Tales, Legend of Sleepy Hollow, Peter Pan. Okay, so we probably are all familiar with uh, Arthur Rackham's uh, illustrations. If you're familiar with uh, uh, those notable stories, then you would be probably familiar with this, at least maybe the style of the artwork. Um, let's see here, Alice in Wonderland. Very cool. Okay, so yeah, this would be, this is going to be quite, quite the very, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, quite the experience, yes. 78 examples of this master's work. So these are individual art pieces, I think, uh, organized into the tarot archetypes. Um, that's what it feels like. So these would be just independent works of art then, you know, put into the format of the 78 card tarot. So this is, this is going to be pretty awesome. Um, what else do some drawings are? Yeah, that's pretty much all it has to say. So it seems like the author's style is very much trying to capture magic. And isn't that interesting? Isn't that what we are all trying to do these days? So let's talk about the cards real quick before we get into the um, interesting thing that I'll show you with the cards. And then, and then you know, we'll, we'll do the reading and all that finish off the video. Uh, so here is the uh, card, and here's the back design. Now you may be able to tell what I'm going to show you in a second here just by looking at the card, but if not, then just sort of hang with me for a second as we talk about the card stock and uh, discuss that. So so it's really, like, like the card stock is really important to me because it's it's really the whole experience. Like, what does the card feel like? Does it feel good? Does it is it too big for your hand? Is it too small? I like cards that are just right in the Goldilocks sweet zone. This card is perfect. It's absolutely perfect. It's the right size. Fits my hand perfectly. It's tall enough to have uh, the picture be clear, but also not as wide um, to be too much of a big card, basically. So this, this, it just it fits. It's, this is the Goldilocks uh, size for me. 
the cardstock feels really good too. It feels thick enough. It actually feels a little thicker than the Make Playing Cards uh, default tarot cards. This is um, the default size of a Make Playing Card tarot card stock. So here's the Ace of Wands. This is the Wade Smith deck, which you're probably familiar with. Um, and you'll see maybe a difference in the artistic style of uh, this particular illustrator. Uh, but already you can tell that the Rackham Tarot is a little bit smaller. Maybe you can see that in the uh, camera there. Maybe it's hard to see because the, these are black borders. But it's about the same size. It's about the same height. A little bit uh, smaller in width. But very close to the same size. So that that's really cool. Um, and they, they feel similar, like this, you know, the cardstock feels really good, it's smooth, it's got, it's, it feels a little bit more grainy than this cardstock, but either way, like, I like it. I don't know a lot about cardstock, to be honest, I just know what I like and I can, you know, um, yeah, iterate my experience about it in words, if I can get those words all out. But the, the cardstock for this feels a little bit more thicker, and, that, and that's cool, I think it'll be more sturdy. So let's have the cards here along with a bicycle playing card, the two, two spades. So it is quite a bit, uh, quite a bit bigger than the playing card, right? So if you're familiar with the playing card size, that's more the most familiar probably for, for most, um, you'll get an idea of what that looks like here. There you go. It's hard to just get it into focus like this because I got this screen up here, yeah. Okay, so the, the playing card is about the bulk of the image right here. And then you've got the border down below here, border up top here. So it's quite symmetrical. I like that idea. And then as you can see, the image goes right to the very edge. And so that, that's a really cool d design choice. And that's what's going to lead up to what I'll show you here in a second. Now, as you can tell, the... Uh, this particular card, uh, I mean, this is just like a, a, a custom print, but it's the same for, for this tarot deck on, on the other versions, but it's got a border. It's got a black border. So when you take this tarot deck, and this will be for any tarot deck that has a border, and you take it and you fan it out, it's black. Nothing really happens. It's just it's a black color. But then you take the cards and fan them that way. Ooh, so the things start, oh, these start to pattern, patterns start to happen. Interesting things can start to happen because the image is, it goes right to the edge. And it depends what the image is, can create um, certain interesting patterns, basically. And so that's what's going to happen here. Because all of the, let me put the fool back into position here. There you go. Because the images, at least for the middle part of the card go right to the edge. You're going to see some really cool things happening here if I can get this right up to the camera here. So if you look at the side of the tarot deck, you can already see that there is a little bit of a difference between just the, the cardstock. If you can, it's hard to even kind of show you. If you see that, you can you can sort of tell. And so when you take the cards like this, you start to fan them out, you start to see interesting patterns. So when these cards are out of order, I wonder what sort of patterns you can see. And then if you just fan the cards like this way, it's kind of hard because they're, they need to be, these cards need to be broken in a lot more. They're very, they're still very stiff. So I'm going to have to break them in. But already you can see what I mean here. The cards, they go, you've almost got a static color that goes right to the edge and then as a result when you fan the cards they just, it kind of just doesn't do much, right? It's just a, a color that's fanned out. But then start to fan them out, interesting things start to happen. So there it is. That's the really cool thing about this deck just by making an artistic choice to have the images go right to the edge. How cool is that? I wonder what it's going to look like when these cards are all mixed up and shuffled, what sort of 
interesting patterns you can see. I just I want to look at it myself and just kind of take that in. It's really cool. You can just take the deck and just kind of just fan it out almost, but like, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. There's a lot of cool colors involved. It's it's almost like looking at a core sample or something like that. Already I can tell you that the major arcana cards look very different. Um, they're di they're designed differently, quite literally, I think, compared to the other cards. It's like the top border is thinner than the minor arcana cards. Minor arcana, yes, and they are. Cool. And what else can we say is that there's images on all of the cards. Again, very similar to the Wait Smith's uh, deck where there's depictions on every one of the cards versus the just the minor arcana, the pip cards, the number cards having uh, just symbols of like the suit arranged in like a geometric pattern. That's, that's a very common style for older decks, maybe from the 1700s uh, and 1800s. That's just the style which you'd make the tarot deck. You'd have images for the court cards that represent people, and then your major arcana cards that would have some sort of, usually human image or, or something that would depict that archetype. Uh, but in these cards, they all have uh, images drawn from the artist's uh, repertoire, a thousand different paintings, all, um, all specially fit to match what the archetype structure of the tarot is. So that's really what you would expect uh, in these tarot cards. And from what I can see, well, we'll find out here in a second, but this is a good thing to understand with your tarot decks is what's the court, how do the court cards, what's their structure? So it's page, knight, queen, king. Um, it's different for some decks, so it's good to know that to get to know your deck, basically. And from what I can tell you, they've got uh, symbols that depict that at the top of the card so that you know which is the court card. Because it may be uh, challenging at first to understand what card is what when you look at these images, because as I'm just going through just by myself, um, some of it makes sense, some of it's intuitive, but maybe not immediately. You, I think a deck like this does will take a little bit of practice if you're well versed in you know other decks and their imagery it seems like they've almost had to shoehorn in some of these images into the tarot deck format but i think it's it it wasn't a difficult shoehorn you know it's almost a crude way of saying it but i feel like um they just chose whoever put this deck together has just chosen the best fit of images to associate with these cards, so that's my take on it. Uh, so here we are, we've got the major arcana cards. What can I show you here? So we've got the Fool, well, we, you already saw the Fool. The Magician is here. That's an interesting choice of uh, imagery for that. High Priestess. Yeah, that's a good choice. Ah, Chariot, that's a good one. Yeah, okay. Let's shuffle these up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is interesting. Um, you got to you got to get this deck. It's really cool. Um, I don't think that I mean, I'll say this, I don't think this should be your first deck. Uh, I really uh, that that would be my strong opinion is just just because um, it, it I mean, if this is your first deck, then I mean, you're not going to know the won't have any bias like that. That's your first experience. I mean, sure, uh, I wouldn't say no. Um, but there are easier ways to, to read tarot cards. I mean, you know, that, that that is a thing. But if I was to give my opinion on, okay, well, you should definitely get the tarot deck. But, you know, if it's your first time, you know, the Waitsmith tarot deck, this style of tarot deck is probably a little bit better because the, the images are just so uh, well-defined uh, and they're so consistent across um, all of the learning material that is a part of tarot. That's important too because, you know, if you get stuck with cards that just aren't really consistent across all of your learning resources, it just kind of makes it hard. But 
if this ends up being your first tarot deck, well then fine. Like you're you're still gonna do good with the tarot deck because you're not you don't have any bias towards what, how the cards are. They just will be what they are to you, and you'll just build off that, um, and then you'll be able to experience other decks eventually and, and know different images. Um, but I, I feel like knowing what I know going back, I think this I feel like this deck would be kind of um, challenging to work with if, if it was your first time. But on the other end of it too, there's always a but, there's always a sense of balance. I, I think you could probably do it. The the guidebook would help you. It tells you what all the cards mean and you just you'd end up memorizing what these cards mean anyways with the associations of the pictures. And you'll carry those into other tarot decks. So it, it just uh, w what it really means is how hard do you want to work? That's that's really what, what this sort of opinion is kind of stemming from. Is if, if you're super passionate about tarot and you want to get into it, and for whatever reason this deck is like, it's going to be your first deck, then it, 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 that won't matter. You're just going to plow into it. You're going you're gonna to have your experience. You're going to get better, and it, and it won't really matter. Um, but, you know, the, the opinion I have of this is just sort of uh, your more comfortable path to tarot. Your path and tarot. <laughs> ah, so much pun. Okay, so there, there, there you go. That's that's something for you to think about. Now, have you been thinking about the question that you want to ask for these cards? They're, they feel pretty well shuffled. Um, I'm not sure what to ask. I, I'll, I'll do these unboxings and ask a similar question each time, but. What, what is the one, here we'll ask this, what is the one thing that I need to improve on to make this channel better? Let's do that, something quite revealing. We'll just do the three cards like the, the guidebook had suggested because, you know, we're just going to use what is in this package to do this whole thing, this unboxing video. Uh, card one, hindsight, look at your past. Insight, look at yourself. So, so it's the three card reading, past, present, future. That's pretty much this, what the, what the guidebook uh, suggests in sort of a different language. But that's really what what they're saying, and that's what we're going to do with the cards. And I'll show you how we do that. Just uh, some overhand shuffles here, quick ruffle. It's hard to shuffle with a small amount of cards. It's much easier to shuffle with larger cards. So here we go. Ah, uh, yeah, I love the back design. Like the color is just really cool. These, these cards are just fantastic. Um, Arthur Rackham instructions by uh, Lunea Weatherstone. So I would say probably Lunea Weatherstone was the uh, creative force in choosing the images, I feel. Maybe? No, maybe not. Look, co co collection edited by uh, Pietro Aligo. Diffusion and Marketing, Mario Pignatelio. Translations by Studio RGE. So there was, that would be the group. So it sounds like the, uh, the, the person responsible for the images would be Pietro Aligo. So that would be sort of the, probably the most important figure here in this case to put this tarot deck together. So he would be the person in charge of looking through all of those thousands of illustrations to choose what are the best images that fit this tarot deck. That's quite a task. That is probably, that probably took a lot of time to be able to sit there and judge what image fits this archetype more than the others. So I'm sure that all the other images had some sort of special symbolism and deep meaning in, in the art and the illustrations. Um, so there you go. That uh, I guess that answers the question I was wondering about. Like, who was in charge of putting these images together? I'm sure that would have been a daunting task. So there we go. 2019. This is the 2000. Came out 2019 a year ago. Okay. So what we're gonna do is just take take the cards off here. I don't know. Yeah, we'll, we'll cut it. Sure. Let's do that. Let's cut it that way and cut it, cut it this way. See. There you go. Flip a card out like this. Flip a card out like that. I'll just flip it upright. There we go. So what do we got? We got the Wheel of Fortune, number 10. That should be Fortune. We've got 5. That should be the Hierophant, I think. We'll check. And then 4, which would be the Emperor. Okay. Past, present, future. Ooh. Hoo-hoo. 
five, four, and ten. That's that's an in, uh, that's a cool pattern. Okay, so so really the present is like anything can happen. The Wheel of Fortune, really cool card. Um, like the way I see it, it's just like the the uh, the portal to the the higher mysteries beyond the human form. If you look at the cards. Uh, you know, z one to ten. You know, the the fool is kind of its own thing, but one to ten, you're dealing with uh, human forms, like the physical world, right? The the, the hierophant, emperor, empress, magician, high priestess, uh, hermit, the chariot. You know, d dealing with the physical world. The number ten, wheel of fortune, is almost like that boundary into this sort of astral, uh, mystical world. So that's that's how I think of the the wheel of fortune, and when I see it. It's it's it, it just makes me feel like wow I, you know it, it's that ticket that ticket to the other dimension and maybe that's um, the answer for this channel is that get the wheel of fortune it's this it'll it'll get me to the next level with this portal so in the past it's kind of interesting it's like the past and the future and I'm, I'm sort of going backwards, but backwards to go forward, maybe, I don't know. In the past, it was Hierophant. So, this deck sort of has its different take on these cards, too. So that's why it's important to, you know, get a guidebook with your cards, because every deck is going to have a different interpretation of what the card means, and, these, and this is uh, no exception. So, with this, the Hierophant is more about... Um, dealing with omens and like the weather and understanding the language of the collective universe speaking on behalf of the gods pretty cool i like that association and then the emperor is the protector of the realm and dealing with boundaries dealing with nobility the sort of soul uh ruler of the physical world in a way so that that's kind of cool so it's almost like i i was from a a higher purpose, maybe, or sort of like a higher ability going down into the futures to more of a practical ability through this Wheel of Fortune. That's kind of cool. That's, yeah, that's short and sweet. I think we'll leave it at that. Well, I wonder what you had asked of the cards. You can tell me in the comments below if you like. There'll be some links in the... Uh, in the comment section, on, you know, how to get this deck and other articles on the website that you can check out. Um, you know, as an Amazon associate, I make, uh, I earn from qualifying purchases. So you can get this deck through Amazon and help fund this channel. Or you can get other things from, from there too, uh, if you want. Uh, a great place to acquire um, excellent tarot cards. So, so there it is. Uh, fantastic deck. Uh, I love it so far. It'll be great to uh, read with this for myself and get used to different images. That's the cool thing about getting new tarot decks is you get you, you, you get to associate these tarot meanings to different images and build up your visualization of these archetype, archetypal figures. Uh, tarot is a great way to do that. A great way to Go within yourself and learn more about yourself uh, in a deeper way through these universal archetypes. Very cool. Okay, so that is that's gonna be it. That that's we're 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 completely unboxed and uh, ready to use these cards. So uh, thank you for watching and stay well read.